Yeah, you could. I, I couldn't. I, I, Everybody. I like how you call Do we it. have sound? Can you hear me, Jim Lyons? Hal Haddon, Don Quick. We can name everybody in this great Supreme Court building today. So uh, let me welcome uh, all of you here to uh, what is a very historic day for all of us and for uh, Phil Weiser's family here in uh, Colorado. Uh, yesterday was an awesome day on the west steps of the Capitol as we inaugurated our great governor, now Jared Polis. And uh, today we do the formal investiture of our great Attorney General, Phil Weiser. Let me say that I remember an uh, inauguration for an AG back in 98. It wasn't anything like this. We did not have these great governors in the name of Governor Roy Romer, Governor John Hickenlooper, and Governor Polis, all, and Governor Ritter, all in attendance to celebrate Phil Weiser. So let's give them a round of applause for being here on behalf of Phil. From a personal note, uh, I've watched all these governors going all the way to the days of Dick Lamb, and uh, we are so blessed in Colorado that we've had the kind of leadership that we do have here, and uh, it will continue uh, under our next governor, and we're just so very, very proud that uh, Colorado has created that kind of leadership here. We are honored uh, to have uh, the members of the Colorado Supreme Court who are here, and in no particular order, uh, Judge Monica, Justice Judge Monica Marcus, uh, Brian Boatwright, uh, Justice, Justice Will Hood, Justice Rich uh, Gabriel, Justice Melissa Hart, uh, Justice uh, Carlos Samor. If you will stand, because the people usually don't get to see you as much, because you're cloistered. You know? Thank you for your service. And uh, those of us who have been around in these circles for a while can never forget uh, other great justices of the Colorado Supreme Court, including Justice Hobbs and Justice Bender, if you will stand and be recognized. <laughs> and we all know oftentimes when uh, people are critical of uh, our system here in Colorado on the merit selection that it has in fact worked. And I think when uh, people look at the Supreme Court, our Court of Appeals, our district courts, our county courts here in the state, it's a system that really is an envy of the nation, and we have uh, had the great luxury for many, many decades now of having one of the best uh, courts uh, in the country up and down, all the way from the Supreme Court down to our, uh, to our county courts. Also, uh, someone who knows a little bit about the Attorney General's office uh, being here, who uh, once upon a time served as a Solicitor General for the state of Colorado, and uh, that is uh, our 10th Circuit Court of Appeals Judge, Tim Tinkovich. Chief Judge, Tim, if you will stand. <laughs> and I also want to introduce our current United States Attorney, Jason Dunn. Jason, if you will stand so we can acknowledge you. Thank you for being here. Now, uh, I guess at this point in time, I'm supposed to make a couple of personal comments. Uh, let me just say, uh, you know, I had the honor of uh, serving as Attorney General for six years before I went to the U.S. Senate. And I did that in part because I was enabled to hold that position by some great people who came before me and who were there at my side. Roy Romer was one of those people who uh, gave me the opportunity is a country bumpkin from the San Luis Valley to come in and serve as his chief counsel. And then people like Bill Ritter, who is district attorney, showed me a lot about the whole interface with law enforcement. And so we enable each other. And now you know, we look at uh, the legacy of uh, John Hickenlooper, the future legacy of uh, Jared Polis. We're all in this together. Uh, I think people described it in different ways yesterday, but it was the Colorado way where we have really shown the nation what great greatness is all about when we believe in, in each other and when we know that somehow the covenant of our state, the covenant of our people, the covenant of America really is how we pass on to the next generation a humanity in a place that is even a better place than the one that we have inherited. And certainly those of you who have been on the journey of civil rights, uh, who have uh, heralded uh, Martin Luther King Jr.'s uh, famous quote of 
the arc of the moral universe bends towards justice, even though it is long, but it does bend towards justice. And that's what we see today as we celebrate uh, this investiture of Phil Weiser as Attorney General. You know, in today's world, when we think about what makes uh, the United States a very special place, you always have to come back to the fact that we are a country that is a rule of law, a nation that is a rule of law, and we respect that rule of law. Some may wonder whether that very basic uh, proposition and principle of our republic is being challenged today, and it is in many different ways. But we're fortunate that here in Colorado, you have someone like Phil Weiser who decided that he would throw his hat into the ring to be the Attorney General of the state because he knew what that arc of the moral universe had been like. Because he knew that his grandmother and his mother had come out of the concentration camps where the rule of law was thrown aside and the respect and dignity for human beings just because they were different was not being honored. And he knew that he wanted to make a difference in the state of Colorado and in our nation, making sure that we respected the laws and we respected everybody, no matter what their background, no matter what their gender, no matter what their sexual orientation, no matter whether they were poor or rich from the east or west, north or south of Colorado or this country. And today, across the, nations, uh, the nation, the attorneys general of the states are now leading the charge to protect our nation and to continue our nation's journey on the march for progress to make us a more perfect union. And that is what Phil Weiser is truly all about. going to have a, a couple of opening prayers, and uh, I would like to call on uh, Pastor Anitha Jones from His Glory Church in Aurora to offer our first blessing. Athena. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm Pastor Anitha Jones, and I'm here with my husband, Pastor Thomas Jones of For His Glory Church in Aurora, Colorado. And I'm here to offer a blessing over Phil and Heidi and their family and over this occasion on today, which is so much bigger than in this room, a blessing that this room cannot contain. But let me say first what a tremendous honor and what a tremendous privilege it is to be here with all of you today. In fact, there's no other place that Tom and I would rather be because today is a very important day because we have the opportunity to be a part of something new and something big that God is doing in the earth. In the Bible, in the book of Isaiah, God said, Behold, I will do a new thing and it shall spring forth. Will you not know it? He promised to even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And new things oftentimes involve new opportunities, new experiences, and new people. Today, each one of us will be an eyewitness to God keeping his word. And so today, let us lift our hands and say, God, we bless you. Would you do that for me? Let's participate. God, we bless you. As we witness Phil Weiser take the oath of office as our next Attorney General of the great state of Colorado, a man that we know that God has blessed, has honored, and has put in place for such a time as this, a voice of reason, wisdom, fairness, strength, and power what an honor. Can we say, God, we bless you. God, we bless you. In fact, as I was reflecting and looking back over 2018, when Tom and I met Phil, your husband, on the campaign trail, and he spoke to our great congregation, we were reminded of the word of God that says in the Bible that God looked for a man. God himself looked for a man who would stand in the gap and make up the hedge on behalf of the people. And Phil, we believe that when God was looking at this time in the earth, 
He saw you. And so God has appointed you. And we are here today to say, Phil, you're the man. <laughs> trust and that we trust to be just and fair, the man who will not judge the people or defend the people based on the color of their skin, their religion, or the size of their pocketbook, but in truth, in fairness, and according to the law. Our nation is at a crossroads and at a time when justice and liberty and even just basic human rights are under attack. We are here today to say, nevertheless, we are hopeful because we are strong, we are strategic, and we are focused on purpose. Why? Why do we still have hope? Because we are putting men and women in place we can trust to serve all the people, to defend all of the people, without anyone having to worry about whether we will get a fair shake or because you're too poor or too old or because of your race or religion or because you are an immigrant. God, we bless you. Can we all say, God, we bless you. So Mr. Phil Weiser, God has placed the mantle of justice and leadership in your hands today. And in the state of Colorado, as my dad would say, God, you have done us proud. <laughs> because God has appointed a great leader, Phil Weiser. And we know that great leaders are ordinary people, just like you, Phil who do extraordinary things because circumstances place a demand on their potential. And I have been taught that the potential of a thing is not in its <coughs> current state, but what happens to the thing when creative hands touch it. Let us bow our heads. Great Heavenly Father, the God who knows all things, sees all things, and understand all things, the God who is omniscient, who is all-knowing, who is omnipotent, all-powerful, the God who is omnipresent. We honor you today. We ask your blessings to be upon Phil and Heidi and their children and the office of the Attorney General. God, we ask you that your protection would be with them, that your strength will sustain them, and that the courage of God will be with them. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that only you could do such a great thing in the earth. And we're thankful that you have chosen Phil Weiser as the man to lead us and to speak for us in such a time as this. And so for this, we give you glory, we give you praise, and we give you honor. And let us say together, God bless. God you bless. Say? Phil Weiser. Phil Weiser. Today. Today, now, now, and forever. And forever. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you very much, uh, Pastor Jones. Uh, we will now have a uh, second blessing from uh, Rabbi Grunwald, who is uh, the rabbi of the Hebrew Educational Alliance Congregation here in Denver and also the president of the Rocky Mountain Rabbinical Council. Rabbi. Fellow citizens, honored dignitaries and guests, thank you for the privilege of offering this benediction. As I stand here today, I feel compelled to mention that it was one year ago today on the Jewish calendar that my son Kobe died of brain cancer. Today we celebrate, we, we honor his yard site and his memory. And I share this with you only, not only to honor his memory, but also to thank all of you, citizens of Colorado, for the values that you hold. You see, my son Kobe benefited from a state program that helps children with life-limiting illnesses. 
helped cover his medical expenses. It is because of all of you, the citizens of Colorado, that in part, our pain and our grief was eased in the most awful time of our lives. As Coloradans, we believe in looking out for our neighbors and taking care of those in need. These are the values that we gather here this evening to uphold as we honor our friend, Phil Weiser, Attorney General of the State of Colorado. So as I hold Kobe in my heart, I invite you to pray with me. Holy One, source of love, justice, and peace. We pray for your, we, we pray for your blessings upon our friend, Phil Weiser, as he assumes his office as Attorney General of the great state of Colorado. We ask for abundant blessings upon Phil and his family, his wife, Dr. Heidi Wald, their children, Aviva and Sammy. God, sustain and protect them just as they loved and supported one another through a hard-won campaign. Grant them joy and prosperity, harmony and success along the journey that lies ahead. We, the people of Colorado, have selected Phil because he represents the best of our values. He is a man of integrity, honor, and grace who lives by your timeless moral imperative, Tzedek Tzedek Tirdof, a just justice you must pursue so that you may thrive and inhabit the land given to you. Phil, you understand the deeper meaning of these words. Tzedek Tzedek is not merely repetition for emphasis. The phrase means a just justice, which is to say achieving justice, just results is not enough. Phil knows that justice must be pursued by just means, balancing diligence with fairness, judgment with dignity, truth with compassion. Phil also understands that our society, for it to thrive, it is not enough to desire justice, but to pursue it. The prophet Micah taught, for what does the Holy Blessed One demand of you, but to act justly, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. Phil walks humbly with the values handed down to him through the generations by his parents, David and Esther Weiser. As the child and grandchild of Holocaust survivors, Phil grew up with a passion for acting justly and loving kindness. He knows well that democracy, freedom, and the rule of law are precious and must be defended for a just society to thrive. The Torah Phil grew up with reminds us no less than three dozen times, you shall not wrong the stranger, for you know the heart of the stranger, having been strangers in the land of Egypt. This imperative is imprinted on Phil's heart. Bless Phil with the courage to stand up to corporate greed and abuse, reckless polluters and predatory lenders. Be with him and his staff as they champion the cause of all Coloradans, of every race, class, and religion, every gender and sexual orientation. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was fond of saying that the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. From the narrow vantage point that we stand at this moment, it can feel like that long, that arc is longer than ever. Yet Attorney General Phil Weiser inspires us with hope, for we know he will press with all his might on that arc. Let us resolve here today together to lend our strength to Phil so that together we may bend the arc of the moral universe just a little closer to justice. Holy One, bless all the, all the inhabitants of our beautiful state with your spirit, that we may come together from all walks of life, from every county and every community, to strive for the Colorado of our highest ideals. May citizens of all races and creeds forge a bond of true harmony to banish hatred and bigotry and to safeguard opportunity and prosperity for all. With the help of Attorney General Phil Weiser and all of our elected leaders, may the state of Colorado stand tall as a beacon of light and hope to our nation, a shining example of justice, peace, and security, prosperity, and compassion for all people, so that we may look forward to that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. And let us say, Amen. <clears throat> Thank you.
Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Rabbi Granwald. And let's give uh, Rabbi Granwald and Athena a round of applause for their wonderful benediction. <laughs> I know there's an overflow room uh, or a couple somewhere else, so we're not forgetting you, and you're here in spirit with all of us, uh, so uh, thank you for, for listening in. Let me ask a question. How many of you have been to Moffat County? Governors, you've all been there. How many of you are Craig is? Well, our uh, next uh, person to make a presentation here is uh, from Moffat County, a uh, former county commissioner in Moffat County, and someone who uh, Governor Ritter uh, appointed to be part of his Innovation Council. So help me welcome former Commissioner from Moffat County, Audrey Danner. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Well, I'm Audrey Danner, and I, my husband and I and family call Craig, Colorado home since 1974. A little bit about Moffat County. Thank you for the lead. Moffat County is 4,740 square miles, less than three people per square mile. Our land is rich in natural resources of oil and gas, pasture land, the Yampa River, one of the last fully adjudicated rivers flowing in Colorado to serve western states, over 300 days of sunshine and coal, and very good people. In December, I was asked to participate on the transi transition team and meet with Department of Law employees willing to share their insights. Our mission, seek first to understand. Here is my story as Phil drove the state to understand local issues. On a warm summer evening, August 2017, Phil Weiser drove from a Steamboat Springs event to Craig and stopped in Hayden at the Wild Goose Coffee. Tammy and Patrick opened their doors to local residents, Hayden School Superintendent, a ranching couple promoting ag tourism, and an Excel employee to understand the future of Hayden. Governor Hickenlooper remembers this historic place in Hayden and how beautiful it was in the summer. Residents noted how Hayden is a great place to raise a family and have job opportunities in Craig and Steamboat. Discussions ranged from the implications of the Clean Power Plan for a small rural school district to the Excel Power Plant on Highway 40, adjacent to 20 Mile Coal. As with any economic discussion within a community, the Gallagher Amendment and Tabor interconnection were noted let me, as uh, often in Let me stop you for just one minute because uh, the Supreme Court is probably saying that you've already finished your time for oral argument. <laughs> But if the administrator of the court could help us uh, figure out what that sound is, turn it off. And I assume by now everybody's turned off their cell phones. <laughs> I think somebody got it. So let's hear from Moffa County again. <laughs> Morning. Phil's first meeting was with the Moffat County School Superintendent to discuss test scores and school financing inequities. Then off to the Memorial Regional Health to meet with the CEO and understand the challenges of rural health care. All in 45 minutes. The sparkling new campus of Colorado Northwestern Community College was our next stop to understand how CNCC is meeting the challenge of educating the workforce and helping students begin their four-year degree. Then, coffee and tea were ready at Downtown Books, a locally owned bookstore with a great coffee shop. Leanne was er ready with early arrivals of a city council member, school board chairman, small business owners, health care providers, and educators. The mayor of Craig was in attendance, and Jane, a poet and ardent environmental advocate, eloquently describing sage grouse and water issues. The drug crisis and wildland firefighting issues were clearly outlined by Sheriff Casey Hume, and he noted the essential cooperation necessary with nearby counties to manage the crises. Our next stop was Tri-State Generation and Transmission. Phil listened to the federal and state implications for our coal-fired power plant, and of course the local coal mines 
who supply the fuel for electricity that serves Front Range cities. The power plant sits along the Yampa River and Trapper Mine near the Yampa Valley Electric Co-op Solar Farm. Well, on this day in August, the Moffat County Fair was in full swing. The fair is an important event to our community representing agriculture and families who provide food and products. And we stopped by the cattle and sheep barns. For those interested, I have a great picture of Phil and a young 4-H'er grooming his steer for the livestock show. Dinner was a simple supper on our deck with a glass of wine. Our view was the foliage along the Yampa River from Craig to Steamboat. T. Wright drove over 100 miles in haying season from his family ranch to describe the concern about ranching, crops, livestock, water, and sage grouse. We gathered not as Democrats and Republicans. We were community members, offering insights, opportunities, opinions, our P to 14 education system, tourism issues, and broadband development. Early the next morning, Phil was off to Meeker for coffee at Wendell's on his way to Rifle and Grand Junction about two and a half hours south. Phil, Ron and I welcome you back to Craig on a summer evening on our deck. Please bring your family. We will have T. Wright, Joanne and Brian, and a Palisade peach crisp, and a likely discuss the future of our natural resources. That's a common topic, particularly coal and our people. We will find the necessary change to help our community remain viable. Phil, thank you for listening. Thank you so very much. Uh, one of the greatest judges of our time in modern history in Colorado is uh, Judge David E. Bell from the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals. He was appointed uh, to that position in large part because he had the support of two very different United States Senators. One can think of Bill Armstrong, very conservative, Tim Worth, very progressive. Well, Judge E. Bell was appointed to the court and has been uh, one of the leading stars uh, in our judicial system in America and on the Tenth Circuit. David will, the judge will uh, uh, call Phil Weiser up and his family and uh, we'll have the formal swearing in ceremony. Judge Bell, let's welcome him. I don't repeat that little ding-dong sound that uh, we heard earlier. <laughs> well, I'll say it again. What a crowd. <laughs> and you are the ones that will be supportive of Phil during the next four years. He cannot be the Attorney General alone, and he needs the people he admires and respects and trusts most, many of whom are in this room and in the adjoining rooms and in listening to this over television. So thank you so much, so much for being here. Well, what a great day for Colorado. We're here for the ceremonial swearing in of Phil Weiser to be Colorado's Attorney General. But first, I want to offer a few personal remarks about my friend, Phil Weiser, who is simply one of the best lawyers, one of the hardest working public servants, and one of the finest human beings that I know. It's true that Phil is about to become Colorado's lawyer for the next four years. But in fact, his job and his title are broader than that. He is going to be Colorado's attorney general. A general, as it were, overseeing a great team of lawyers serving the state of Colorado. 
This demands far more than being a superb lawyer, who Phil certainly is. It requires skills of leadership and organization and vision and the ability to select and motivate good people. In these critical areas, Phil has few equals. Phil's resume covers all the bases in a way rarely found <laughs> in today's politics. He graduated near the top of his class at one of America's finest law schools, New York University. He served as a law clerk, first for me, on the United States Court of Appeals for the District, or for the, for the United States Court of Appeals for the Tenth Circuit, and then he served for two justices on the United States Supreme Court, Justice White, the famous Whizzer White of Colorado, and Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg of notorious RBG fame. <laughs> he served in the executive branch as deputy assistant attorney general for the United States in the antitrust division. From there, he went on to the University of Colorado School of Law, where first he was a professor and then was the dean with all of the administrative challenges that that job takes. And while at CU, he helped develop and run a successful incubator project for startup companies, showing Phil's interest and knowledge of and immersion in entrepreneurial skills and business skills in this state. Wow. It's almost as if Phil's entire career has been preparing him for just this task. He's had experience in both law and business. He has worked in both federal and state venues. He has served in both the executive and the judicial branches of government. Phil is going to encounter a broad range of issues as Attorney General, but nothing is going to take him by surprise. I cannot imagine an Attorney General who is better prepared for this job. But there is more. I am sure some of you in this room have needed to hire a personal attorney at some point. And on this, I am not going to ask for a show of hands. <laughs> Who did you select? You wanted more than a smart and an experienced lawyer. You wanted someone with sound judgment, with practical sense, and a sure moral compass. Someone willing to speak the truth. Phil will be all of these things to his client, the state of Colorado, and by extension, to all of us who are citizens of the state of Colorado. Yet after all is said and done, it ultimately boils down to a matter of trust. Trust. What a rare quality in politics today. Yet, take my word for it. Today, tomorrow, and every day for the next four years, you can always, always trust Phil Weiser. So this ceremony is not so much to celebrate Phil Weiser, sorry Phil, <laughs> but it is to celebrate Colorado for its extraordinary good fortune to have Phil Weiser as our Attorney General for the next four years. But first we need to proceed with the task of publicly administering the oath of office. Now Phil has already been legally sworn in as Colorado Attorney General because Colorado needed his services as soon as possible. <laughs> but this ceremony is to publicly commemorate that fact. And so let's get on with the task. Phil, would you come forward please? And because all of you know that no one accomplishes what Phil has been able to accomplish. I told the family I was going to choke up at this because this is a really, 
really special family. Phil would not be Phil Weiser without this family. I have never had a conversation with Phil where he hasn't spoken of his family. And so I'd like his family to come up and join him today. His wife, Heidi Wald. <laughs> Children, Aviva and Sammy. <laughs> and his parents, David and Esther Weiser. And so now, on to the oath of office. I want you to listen carefully to this oath of office. It is an oath. An oath is one of the most, maybe the most, sacred statement that a person can make. It is not called the pinky promise of office. <laughs> it's not called an agreement of office. It's not even called a contract of office. It's called an oath of office. And an oath carries very sacred and binding commitments. As I read this oath, and as Phil takes it, I want you to listen to each of the words, because they all will have significance. And I want you to watch also, uh, as Phil takes this oath, because he is taking the oath with his hand upon a cedar, a, a prayer book in the Israeli and Jewish custom. So, Phil, if you will have your hand on the book, repeat after me. I, Phil Jacob Weiser, I, Phil Jacob Weiser do, solemnly swear do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Colorado, and the laws of the State of Colorado. And I, will faithfully perform and I will faithfully perform the duties, the duties of, the of the Office of Colorado Attorney General upon which I am about to enter to the best of my ability, the best of my ability. So, help so help me God. Ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted to present to you Colorado's Attorney General, Phil Weiser. so sorry I can't thank everyone here in the rooms and who will be joining us because you're all a part of this. I could not be here without you. I could not do what we need to do without you. How's this microphone doing? Is it okay? All right, good. First, in a great Yiddish tradition, let me say a few words before I speak. <laughs> Pastor Jones, you answer the question what is and why have an investiture? Because I needed to be invested with moral authority, not merely legal authority. Empathy and purpose, and I appreciate your blessing. Rabbi Grunewald, I was there as you and your wife exemplified courage. And we're a part of a community that allowed us in and Kobe taught us all so much. In the Jewish tradition, when someone passes, it is said, let his memory be a blessing, and I assure you, for me and everyone whose life Kobe touched, including our governor, he is such a blessing. What we all have to do is recognize the learning that we take in and grow and be stronger from it. 
and you've gotten to hear some of those I've learned from. Jared, it is going to be such an honor and a thrill to be your lawyer. I've known Jared for quite some time, and our state is in great hands, as anyone who watched yesterday has to know. And I loved when he said, there's nothing wrong with Colorado that can't be fixed with what's right in Colorado. And to that, I would add, And to that, I would add, there is nothing wrong with America that can't be fixed with what's right in Colorado. <laughs> Your partnership, it is an honor to have my first lady to be your, uh, with your as first gentleman. Um, you and your whole family, what is great, and this is a continuation of John Hickenlooper, your complete authenticity is exactly what democracy needs. In a time of cynicism, there is nothing more important than authenticity. And John Hickenlooper, you led with authenticity and with heart. And when I went to Craig, Colorado, what T. Wright said to me was the only Denver mayor ever to show up at you know, meetings there to talk about water was John Hickenlooper, because John Hickenlooper knew that we are all one state. And that is the spirit that Jared's campaign was about and that he and I will continue. And like every good continuation, Roy Romer, I have learned so much from you. Your teaching and wisdom I think by your own admission is profoundly Talmudic. The conversations that we had about coal touch on your teaching that all truth is partial. And when we were in Hayden, Colorado, the coal plant, which was set to be closed, had been reassessed and the school budget was cut by 40%. 40% like that to a local school. That's the truth. It's also the truth that we are working to manage in a difficult time this year, for the first time in a long time, emissions were going up. We have to manage both of those two concerns. They're both true. And your teaching continues to inspire us. And Bill Ritter, the first statewide campaign I worked on was your campaign for governor. And I thought they were all that easy. Bill gave me extraordinary opportunities both during that campaign and a co-chair of that innovation council that introduced me to Audrey Danner. And I got to work on, back then, Bill was saying to me, what is this ubiquitous broadband? It sounds like a funny topic. Well, here we are a long time later, and we've got an attorney general and a governor to whom this is religion. If people aren't connected in the 21st century economy, which requires broadband, they can't participate. And Audrey Danner can run circles around everyone on this topic. And we need a Colorado where everyone has access to broadband and all the tools that we can bring to give people that. And you started that and gave me an opportunity to work on that. Audrey, what you put together was such a special event and that gave all of you a sense of the journey I was on. And it's worth noting that night, we weren't together as Democrats and Republicans, we were Coloradans. And when I asked Joanne, who is a diehard Democrat, a teacher, and I asked T. Wright, a rancher and a diehard Republican, I asked each of them, who is your favorite political leader? And they both said the same person. And he's here with us today, Russ George. <laughs> Russ George, like Audrey, is on my transition team. And what Russ has taught me about water is crucially important. I've learned about that from Ken Salazar, from Dave Robbins, and I'll continue to be a student and we all will be students together to meet the challenges of the 21st century. We are not living in an easy time and we have to together address these challenges. Now, Judge David Ebel. Rarely does one live a life and be able to look where you went in one direction and it made all the difference. However, the fact that you picked out my resume which I think it was because I did college debate, I'm not exactly sure, and said, would you come for an interview in Denver, Colorado? Changed my life. The first time I came to Denver was to interview, and those who know Judge David E. Bell, his interviews are legendary. 
And somehow, some way, he decided to hire me. And I can't begin to explain how my life has changed, but let me just state a few facts. He recommended me for my next job, which Justice Byron White did, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. He also recommended me to my wife, Heidi Walt. <laughs> call it a full service clerkship. <laughs> at our wedding, like today, he gave a blessing and he has been a guardian angel at every step of my career. Not everyone has had the experience of a mentor. I have, and one of my deepest commitments as attorney general is to be inspired by that type of mentorship. When I thought about what I would do after the 2016 election, um, my wife and my kids had a lot of conversations. And one of the interesting parts of this is people would then later come and say, Heidi, why are you letting Phil run for statewide office? And she would say, it's his duty to run for statewide office. We together need to do this. Heidi, I could not have done it without your complete and unabiding support. Thank you. And to Aviva and Sammy, I had an idea that I don't know whether Heidi believed or not, but we started from this idea that won't this be a great civic education for our kids? <laughs> and indeed it was. For Aviva learned about the opioid epidemic in Alamosa County, including touring the local jail. And Sammy, on consecutive weekends, went to Conejos County where we ran into Ken Salazar, and Sedgwick County, which he says is the highlight of the campaign for him. How many people here have been to Sedgwick County? Notice how the politicians all raise their hands. <laughs> and this experience absolutely has prepared me. And to that, to my mentor extraordinaire, Ken Salazar. When I started thinking about this, I talked to Ken and he was pushing me get in the race, get in the race, what are you waiting for? And the day I announced, he endorsed me. And more importantly, his moral guidance, which included an injunction, which I wasn't gonna disobey, you need to visit every county in the state, guided me and inspired me. And one of the favorite experiences our kids had was when we went to Dolores County, Dove Creek, we met the heads of the Democratic Party it's uh, Sally and Hazel, right? They were wonderful. They've been there for like 20 years. And they said, we loved Ken Salazar because he always remembered our names. As soon as we left, I kid you not, I'm like, was that Sally and Hazel? Sally and Edna? <laughs> and later when I told Ken the story, he said, Roy Romer used to say, I love them all, but they need name tags. Ken's leadership as attorney general was an inspiration because what he said to me when I thought about running is this is the best job he ever had. It's a unique office with a special mission. And today and yesterday I visited with an extraordinary group of public servants. And my chief deputy, Natalie hanlon Lay, who's here somewhere, where's Natalie? Who's over there? Said, and I will repeat, that our ambition is for this to be the best law firm in the state of Colorado. And by that she means doing the best legal work, but also where people have the most fun coming to work. Because we need to be a team on behalf of the people of Colorado. And I need all of you to be part of this team. We can't do this alone. Democracy is not a spectator sport. It's a team sport. And we're all on Team Colorado to make our government work. And here's how Lincoln defined democracy of the people by the people and for the people. And we're inspired by the sorts of teachings we heard, including a quote on this building. This may have been picked out by Michael Bender. An injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. That's the spirit to be the lawyer for the people that we all will have working with you to solve problems and to use the law as a powerful tool for justice. Indeed, that quote, Justice, justice shall you pursue, 
is Justice Ginsburg's favorite quote from the Bible. It's a powerful injunction to what we all need to do. I want to thank my predecessors, including Ken Salazar, John Southers, Cynthia Kaufman, Gail Norton, Dwayne Woodard, and J.D. McFarland. The last time we had a Democratic AG and Democratic governor was when J.D. McFarland was our Attorney General and Dick Lamb was governor. And this group of leaders have helped steward this office and I'm honored to be a part of that chain. I want to acknowledge the University of Colorado Law School, which for the last 20 years has been my professional home. And in the last year or so, both Justice Melissa Hart and I have been called to serve. And I know, as your colleagues on the Supreme Court will attest, your background prepared you perfectly for that job. And my background, as Judge Bell said, was able to prepare me for this job. It's a testament to see you law school and all the alums in the room and our current dean, Jim Anaya, that here is a school of law that is not about being an ivory tower. It's about being an engaged part of our community, and in Jim's case, on international levels as well. And we are lucky to have two great law schools here in Colorado. I plan to be a partner to both of them. And I got such joy out of teaching, I will still teach, just as John Southers did when he was Attorney General. In fact, there's a great saying in the Talmud, which is, I've learned from my teachers. I've learned from my peers, but most of all, I've learned from my students. And the number of students who got engaged on this campaign with me was kind of like a secret weapon. Because I could travel all across the state, and there were former students who wanted to be there helping me lead. And it was a powerful opportunity. We have a great team here in Colorado. And it's remarked a lot yesterday, I'll say it again, on the campaign trail, not just with Jared, but also Jenna and Dave and county commissioners and state legislators all thinking we've got a special responsibility to make our government work. And we in Colorado, I believe, can be something other than what we're seeing at the federal level. There is, like I began with, a lot of cynicism. But this time is a time for Colorado to lead. And that doesn't happen because I happen to be a steward right now, or Jared is. It happens because all of us, together, work finding ways to solve problems, whether it's the opioid epidemic, whether it's how we manage our water, whether it's how we manage to keep our air and water clean, protecting consumers, improving our criminal justice system. These are formidable challenges. But as we solve them together in creative ways, we show that government can work, and we get people believing in democracy. And that's what I'll wake up every day to do, and I will be there with you, and I will need you even more now to be effective than I did to get here. So thank you all so much. I'm honored to be your Attorney General. special guests that we're going to hear from for a short video. Congratulations to the state of Colorado and every good wish to the state's new attorney general, Philip Weiser. Phil served as my law clerk in the 1995 to 1996 term. He was wise witty, and the best of team players. Thriving on heavy duty assignments, he cared about the right things. First and foremost, he cared deeply about our democracy and how it could be made to work for all the people dwelling in our fair land. A highly regarded translation of Homer's Odyssey starts with the line, this is the story of a man, one who was never at a loss. Phil Weiser is just that type of human. Once convinced of the right goal to pursue, he goes for it fearlessly 
and relentlessly, but also with keen intelligence and diplomatic savvy. In the years following his clerkship, I have stayed in touch with Phil, applauding his work at the Department of Justice Antitrust Division, the White House, and more recently, his deanship of the University of Colorado's Law School. Bravo, Phil, on what you have accomplished to date. I anticipate many encores of your successful performances as you meet the challenges ahead. So one has to think about our march towards a more perfect union through the eyes and leadership sometimes of Ruth K. Bader Ginsburg, who uh, today obviously needs our prayers to continue a long life, but who, is, who has made such a difference uh, in the lives of our nation and the lives of our world, and a mentor and leader to Phil Weiser. Let's give her a round of applause for <laughs> One last thing, we had uh, yesterday such an awesome inauguration for uh, our Governor Polis, but in that inauguration there were also two other state constitutional officers who were elected and uh, Roy Romer and others watched uh, them campaign across the state of Colorado. I would like uh, Jenna Griswold, our new Secretary of State, to stand up if you will give her a round of applause. And Dave Young, the new state treasurer for the state of Colorado. Thank you all for attending this awesome uh, ceremony for uh, this new beginning for Colorado's Attorney General's office. After this uh, ceremony, which is now concluded, uh, there will be a reception that will go on for a while down at the foyer. So one last time, let's give it up for our Attorney General, Bill Weiser.